uh, thinking about our Great Plains Trainer 40 here, uh, I mentioned that my first takeoff uh, didn't stay straight very well. It really pulled off to the right. Part of that was I was lined up in such a way that I was going a little bit to the right from the beginning. But then something happened, and it didn't feel like controls were going off. But um, as I got out looking at the plane afterwards, I'm noticing the amount of offset that I've given the motor here to the right. And I've sought to duplicate what was recommended in the plans. But I'm thinking that's a bit excessive. And so I'm going to just straighten that out a little bit and uh, see what that does in terms of the flying characteristics. Now, repositioning a motor isn't exactly rocket science, but um, I just want to share these things with you because there's some things that, that come up along the way that you might not be thinking of. Uh, first off, it's always good to just check that everything is clearing fine. I have just the smallest clearance, not even enough for that scale between that back shaft and the, the gear, not even enough for this one. I can see light through there, <laughs> but uh, that's really close. Obviously, you wouldn't want that rubbing there. But then as I look at this extreme set of offset, I'm noticing that this bolt here is on an angle that's lined up that's lined up along here with that bolt. And look at this angle compared to the fuselage. That one much better. Twenty-five, uh, twenty-three. Okay, so that one's also bent a little bit that way. So I think what's happening is that as I've tightened down on this, it's pulled it that way, and it's just sort of pulling the whole thing over there, being most acute on this side. Uh, the next thing to think of is uh, which way to go with it. Do I want to just let this out, or do I want to put that in? or some combination of the two. Well, that clearance right here tells me I'm definitely not just going in on that side. Um, I think about my weight and balance. The weight and balance is um, between the factory recommended position and the 25% back on the wing. So I think I'll move it, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> you really have to, uh, try it out, don't you, to, to really know what you want. It could go either way. But anyway, I'm going to start at least by moving out on this one. Uh, the next thing, I just have a look at how I've got it uh, attached in the back. And I see in the back, I've just, this is threaded rod, and it's got a nut on the back as well as a nut on this side. Um, so uh, we've got clearance out here, so I'm going to move uh, things out on this end. Now, the next thing is just to establish where my starting point is, I'm going to estimate the distance out at the uh, very end of this. And that's always a bit of a trick. Let me get a square. It's real easy when you're sighting down on something to, um, to actually um, not sight straight. So if you have something like the square and you, you set it up to where the uh, vertical piece has got a little bit of a gap there, so for sure it's setting flat on the bottom. And uh, got a flat surface here that you're working off of. And I'm lining that up so it's right on the front edge of the casing. So let me measure out here, working carefully not to put any pressure on the plane. And that's about eight millimeters. Okay, then we'll take it and put it on the left hand. Okay, we've got that on the casing. We measure back from there. And that looks like about 15. Okay, so that gives me something to um, get started with. Um, it might also be a good idea to get the vertical position established. For this, I would like a plate to measure from. Okay, so for this one, I've got a piece of three-ply that I can put to where it's definitely down on that side. Let's give it a little bit extra weight over there. Oh, I'm going to measure that. 
Get a bit of extra weight over there to make sure it's down on that side. It appears to be nice and flat. I'm going to measure how far down the motor is from the front. Okay, six millimeters. Okay, so that gives me a reference point, and it's good to write these things down in a book so that you can uh, keep a diary of how it's flying, changes that you've made, what happens along the way. And so now we want to play around and make some changes. And I'll probably keep the CG roughly where it is because it's flying beautifully. Um, the, uh, a little bit of a challenge sometimes not having the flaps with a reasonably heavy airplane. Um, it, uh, <laughs> it can be a little bit hard to slow down. I did have thread locker on these. And a, when you use a thread locker, use a variety that uh, will release. <laughs> so it keeps it from jiggling loose, but it allows you to be able to take them loose when you need to. Okay, so I'm screwing the, the one side that where I'm going to move it to uh, and where I want it to go. And I'll be giving um, you know, doing a little bit of trial and error along the way. Some of these things you could use a socket on, but it's very hard to find a socket that you can get to clear. So generally, uh, little tiny spanners are good. And I, I bought a set of metric ones off of um, some online place. And I got my good old Craftsman <laughs> ignition wrench set from the uh, good old the Imperial ones from the good old days. Back when we had distributors and coils and things such as that in our cars. Uh, and I was a car mechanic before I got into these things. Though I guess I was into control line planes before. Now for some reason that bottom one doesn't seem to want to fit as well. These ones, by the way, are kind of nice in that you've got uh, a side opening on one part and an end opening on the other. Of course, all of them have got that little angle on the thing so that you can turn it a bit and then turn it over and turn it a bit. But when you also have this one over here, it gives you the opportunity to be able to turn it a little bit, get on it, turn it a little bit, get on it this way, turn it a little bit, you know, and so forth. Gives you more options for what you can do with it. There's a good example right there. Uh, underneath, I was trying to get onto the nut and the casing of the motor was keeping it from going on all of the way. So by turning it over and going this way with it, <laughs> I was able to get at it. Okay. These ones are coming out. Okay, now a couple of things are happening here. Uh, first off, you know, I'm loosening up the two on this side and I'm loosening up the the back two on that side and the front two on this side. Um, so it allows me to get the motor over there. But I've left the other ones uh, exactly where they were so that if I want to return back to where it was, those haven't changed yet. And now I'm looking at what's happening with the motor and it looks like I need to go a lot farther. And I'm also keeping an eye on my clearance back here. At some point, we will start moving the other ones, but in the meantime, it just gives us a, another point of reference to have an idea how far we're going. The other thing I'll mention with regard to doing this is that when you're actually tightening them up, we're going to tighten three of them, because three of them will define the position. And then the fourth one, we will alternate between front and back as necessary, to get that one to tighten up without moving it. So it's, it's just there supporting it. But the other three will be defining the position. So that's only got the slightest bit of right hand offset. So we don't want to do any more than that, I don't think. So I'm going to give that a try and see where it takes us. Oops. <laughs> Other thing here is I, I went to turn this and it's turned the whole thing. Okay, so uh, 
I've got a bit of an issue here with regard to what's happening in the back. And that wasn't as tight as what it should have been. These things can jiggle loose. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add some thread locker to all of these because they don't really act like they have it on there. I might have missed that putting it together. Loctite brand is your um, uh, typical name brand thread locker. This one is 3Bond. Uh, it was recon recommended to me by our local auto parts place. It does the job. Uh, you'll note that this is medium strength for bolts, nuts, and threads, semi-permanent, parentheses, removable, end of parentheses, uh, and for bonding and sealing of gaps. So that's what you want is a non-permanent one. They'll have a color to them, so this is kind of a reddish sort of color. And that helps you to know whether you put it on there, which should have helped me with this one. <laughs> We're going to make sure we've got these nuts on the firewall nice and tight before we do anything out at the motor. Okay, we're going to have to get on the one on the inside. A little socket set would be ideal. Okay, uh, much harder for the bottom ones. I guess this is another good example of, you know, checking things and all of that. My son was um, with us here recently. He used to fly with me when um, when he was a teenager uh, with the radio-controlled planes. And now he's a commercial pilot. And he was <laughs> uh, suggesting to me that we need to be much more uh, careful about the things that we do with our model planes. You know, there's no way that you'd take the kind of risks with a real plane that we do with these things. And, um, you know, to do a lot more double checking and safety checking and stuff like that. So my son, um, who uh, used to fly with me when he was a teenager, the, the RC planes, um, he was here for a visit and uh, we went flying and his first time flying a radio-controlled plane in like, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. Um, but he now flies commercial jets. And uh, he was telling me that we're taking far too many risks with the model planes. That we really should be much more careful in what we do, much more precise. Uh, drill more, you know, in terms of like the practicing of the various techniques that we do and stuff like that. To be much more certain that we're going to not only stay safe, but not damage the aircraft. <laughs> you know? So it's not just safety of the people that are watching, but... They're actually the aircraft itself looking after it. Um, and this is a good example of the need for that in that I had meant to put thread locker on these and somehow I failed to do so. And if this was the door on a commercial aircraft <laughs> or a door plug on a commercial aircraft that had come loose, <laughs> Uh, and somebody gets sucked out of the plane because of it, well, that would be an absolute disaster. And yet, in our hobby, it seems like we're quite content to have situations where we lose a plane because of just something that was just careless. And I'm guilty of that more often than I'd like to be. Uh, so an admonition to uh, RC Jim, as well as the rest of the radio-controlled community. Let's try and up our game a bit in terms of safety and double-checking things and making sure we got things right. And by the way, I appreciate comments that any of you have with regard to things that we could do better. So whatever the thing might be. Drop it in the comment section below. Uh, I reply to those and I also change my ways <laughs> as needed when somebody points out something that could be done better. Okay, uh, so now we've got those things tightened up. Okay, so this one's 
Yeah, this one's got thread locker. Yeah, I guess I mentioned already that I could tell that these did have it on them. So I managed to put it on the front part, but not on the outside part of the back ones. What I'm doing is I'm going to start out just doing the top ones here to um, see about the side to side positioning. Okay, I'm getting my eyes to where they're right along the back of that outer shell of the motor. 192 187 okay so I still got a little bit going this way which is appropriate but not a lot and yeah, it looks like I'm just using my fingernail on the washer to see whether I get any movement or not both of them are reasonably snug but I got a tiny bit of movement on the front one so I'm gonna move it back a bit and These are both snug over here, so it's just a matter of giving it a tiny bit more. And it goes without saying, but with the nuts on the back, if you want to bring them out, it's like you're unscrewing the nut in order to tighten it. And the ones that are on the front, in order to get it tightened, you're actually screwing it clockwise forward. Normal right-hand thread. Okay, that appears to be nice and snug. Okay, now the question is, what about up and down? And first thing I'm wondering is just in general how it looks. We're expecting to have a little bit of down, and the idea of the down is that when you give it the throttle, a plane will tend to go up. And by having a little bit of down on it, you give the throttle, it tends to hold it a little bit straighter. But not really terribly critical. Nothing as much as the issue of the the other. I think that looks pretty good. Um, let's just see where we're at in terms of our original measurement. Okay, about five mils. It was six mils. Okay, so it's a tiny bit higher than what it was. So we could go down a milli smidge. nice and tight. Well, just for security's sake, I have put a drop of the uh, thread locker just under the threads on the outside uh, of these. We got the nylock nuts uh, on there and they should, you know, be uh, held in place with a nylon locking mechanism. But with these nuts, the more that you use them, taking them off, moving them in and out and various things like that, the more it frees up the nylon in there. Um, so I thought, well, just to be, to be extra safe and mainly to keep from totally losing the motor, <laughs> and put a little bit of thread locker just onto the threads on the outside, which will just make it harder to thread out. And um, of course, we'll be checking this with each flight. And um, should something be happening, then then we have to uh, we have the opportunity to correct it before we've had the motor come off of the airplane. Okay, so I've got uh, three of these all uh, firmed up now. And so what I want to do now is with this last one down here in the bottom, is just bring up the nuts from both sides. And I'm gonna also add a drop of thread locker into that one down there. There we go. Direct hit. So we're just bringing the the nut up on each side to where it's real close without putting any sort of pressure on it or anything like that. And the idea is that this one isn't changing its position at all, it's just helping to support it in the position that's been established by the other three. And it's just a nicely tiny bit snug. Same with that one. Believe it or not, these aluminum back plates, the mounting plates, they've got a bit of give in them. Certainly when you crash an airplane, it's pretty easy to bend one. 
Um, so it's not like you're going to bust the motor if you put the tension on this wrong. It's not like some things. But nonetheless, you want to essentially allow it to stay straight and just have this tightened up on both sides to hold it there. And so I'm gradually increasing the amount of tension I put on this in each direction, going from the front and then the back, and then the front and the back, front and the back, going back and forth until I've got it to where it's really nice and snug. Something that's appropriate for this size bolt. And I might also mention that's a good thing about working with this type of thing with small tools. Small bolts, small tools. Helps keep you from busting things. <laughs> okay, now, just out of curiosity, uh, this one right here, as we line that one up, it's definitely moved. And get to the outside of it. Okay, we've got 24 and a half, 26 before it was that way. That's a tiny bit this way. This one still has got a little bit, a little bit cockeyed going that way, but not much. So you recall before we had, you know, it was then in that direction, um, but much more so. So it helps straighten those out a little bit. It's got our motor in a more of a central position. And that's interesting. Because it's almost exactly in the center. Let's have a look. 11. 11. <laughs> okay. Uh, Keep in mind, you know, the precision of the balsa on this, you know, is not necessarily anything uh, rocket capable or whatever. But uh, at the moment, we got that uh, motor right exactly dead center. So, uh, before, after, uh, 11 and 11, and down was five. So before we had eight millimeters here, it's gone up to 11. Before we had 15 mils there, it's gone up or gone, gone down to 11. So this is now equal. Uh, it was six millimeters down. Now it's five millimeters down. Well, I'm getting ready to uh, fly the Great Plains Trainer 40 tomorrow. Give it a test flight, but I thought I'd just check and see precisely where we're at. Um, I'm assuming that this wing is extremely straight. Whatever it is, if we're measuring straight back, it's going to be fine. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the leading edge of the wing out to the leading edge of the prop, and uh, do 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 coming out here. That's 258. And then as I do the same thing over here, trying to make sure I'm coming out straight, parallel to the fuselage and also level coming out there, I got about uh, 262, okay? So uh, wh what we then do is we um, uh, say, okay, we got uh, 262 out on that side, 258 on this side difference between those two is uh, four mils, four millimeters. Those are dimensions in millimeters. So the tangent of this angle here is the opposite over the adjacent. So that's four divided by, and in terms of working out the width, it's not the diameter of the prop, it's how far these two points were apart from each other when they were level. So if that was level out there like that, then as I measure out here, I figure 245, or sorry, 145 for half of it. Uh, 145 each way is 290. 
So 4 divided by 290 is what we want. So the tangent of alpha is 4 over 290. And as far as working that out, I might have a scientific calculator someplace. But the easy thing to do is just go to the internet. And, um, oh, I did do 4 over 290. I just wrote it down wrong there. Um, I just searched for, um, I had uh, Siri show me a, um, uh, a ta calculator that could do an arc tangent. And um, the, that's this tangent minus one. It's called an arc tangent. So the angle whose tangent is such and such. Okay, so I put four over 290 in there. It said calculate, and it came out to 0.79 degrees. Okay, so I've got a 0.79 degree right offset. Now, I then had a look at the plans. <laughs> And, you know, I, I said earlier that I had previously set the offset according to plan. Now, <laughs> Jim was wrong. Uh, what I had done is I'd set it according to what I have measured on other models that fly well. <laughs> okay, looking at the plan, uh, it doesn't show any offset at all. It's got the motor mounted exactly straight, and it doesn't even have a, a, any sort of vertical offset. Um, and I, I checked it on the original plan with a square, and uh, that uh, firewall is square. Uh, the motor mount is mounted flat against it. You know, nothing shown in terms of an offset. So I'm a tiny bit better than the plan <laughs> as far as having an offset, but less than the two degrees that uh, one of our viewers has suggested would be uh, an optimal sort of uh, amount to have. Um, of course, it wouldn't take much to uh, take it up to two degrees. But uh, we're going to fly it tomorrow and just see what its flight characteristics are with a 0.79 degree offset. Well, having checked the side to side uh, offset, we now want to check the vertical offset. So um, the first thing that I've done is I've had a look and we got about uh, 180 to the middle of the fuselage there and about 180 to the middle of the fuselage back there. So it's sitting pretty level to the ground. So then I get my square in here, just a good old carpenter square. And I'm looking at where the, um, getting the square on the leading edge of the, uh, the prop. And I'm looking up the top and I've got about three or four mil gap up there. So that prop is actually angled up a little bit, which is the opposite of what we want. So we're going in here and uh, we've, um, i uh, taken loose the nuts in the back on the bottom. Uh, just looking at my clearance here, making sure that's okay. Uh, the top is good as it is, so I'll just make sure those things are snugged up. And I had done a little bit of work with those too, so just making sure they're right. It's wanting to come loose a little bit. Make sure that's nice and snug. Okay, and now we can do our bit on this. Okay, that's nice and snug. This one's nice and snug. Okay, re-verify where we're at vertical-wise. Okay, that's lined up with the inside there. And yeah, maybe about three mils. Okay, and we want to go beyond the three mils. Um, so we should be able to tighten up these guys down here and get that. As I said earlier, when I do this, I typically just use three of them to get it into position, making sure that the other one is clear. And then after I got three of them in position, then I will tighten up the last one to try and get it to where it's not fighting the other ones. Simply supporting that position. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Okay, it's even. And that's pretty well almost even got a half a millimeter <laughs> okay and um, keeping in mind what I was doing there we got a similar distance between these two 
So if four mils is our um, 0.79 degrees, then you know we'll go for four or five mils, have something similar going down. Um, okay, and of course the basic idea with the down thrust is that when you're up in the air and you hit the throttle, it won't affect the trim so badly if it's got a tiny bit of down into it. And I think normally you'd have less of a down angle than an up angle. So we might even go for less than the four mil. Maybe three or four mil, something like that. Huh? Make sure this one is letting it move. Okay, that's nice and snug. Okay. Now that's going to be five mil. Five and a bit. Let's back it off a tiny bit. And we'll check that. Yeah. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's about uh, two and a half mils, something like that. So just barely a bit of down, which is better than a fair bit of up. <laughs> okay, so let's double check here. Do 66 and a half, and that's 260. I'll probably get it up to a degree, huh? Okay, uh, six divided by 290, calculate, and it got 1.18 degrees. Okay, that's probably better anyway. Okay, so I'll uh, just tighten this up a little bit more. Anytime when you're playing with these things, you <laughs> change one thing, it's going to affect the other. Okay, and uh, just double checking the bottom one now that we've played around with the top one. Let's see what that's done to the bottom. Okay, now we now have more of a down here. And that's about seven. Okay. I'll back that off a bit. Okay, yeah, I already put the red locker in that one, didn't I? Okay, 59. And... 66, 67. Okay, so I was trying to get this closer, which I did. So now we want to work with this one. Okay, so what's happened here, I've moved out the bottom one to, um, to give us what we want in terms of this vertical. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, so I've got the vertical set with these two on this side. So now what I need to do is get the side to side right with that one over on the opposite side. And we've got, okay, 59 and 66, like one mil too far. So it's pretty close. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, 60 and 66. Okay, so that's the six mil, which gave us gave us 1.18 degrees, and just over one degree. Okay, so that was side to side, and now double checking our vertical. Okay, much less, maybe about three mil. Okay, so just a very tiny bit of down. We got just over a degree offset to the right. Let's do the three mil, just see what that is. Okay, three over 290, 0.59 degrees. So we got 1.18 degrees to the right, 0.59 down. So we'll double check that after we get everything uh, tightened up. Okay, so I got those three all tightened, you know, screwing the front one in that way, screwing the back one in that way. So it tightens it. 
and now I want to get this bottom one just to where it uh, is fit, fitting in with that. I'm going to put a drop of thread locker in there for a start. Just working both sides, getting up close, and then just starting to get it a little bit, tiny bit snug. And then going back and forth between the front and the back, getting snugger and snugger as we go. Okay, so that's all finalized then. And let's just see where we ended up. 59. Yeah, 59 and 66. Okay, so we ended up with seven mils. So let's just do our seven mils on here. Okay, seven divided by 290, calculate. And that's 1.38 degrees. So 1.38 degrees right. And yeah, I'd say four, four and a half, almost five. Okay, we'll call that five down, maybe four and a half. Okay, four and a half to five mils down. Let's say it's four and a half, get precise here. So 4.5 divided by 290, calculate. And we've got 0.89 degrees. That's down. Yeah, okay, the top is farther out than the bottom, so that's definitely down. And uh, with this one, it was larger over than over here, so that's definitely to the right. So, with that, we will uh, do our test flight tomorrow and uh, see how it goes. But uh, I expect it'll be good, you know, given that the plans have it dead on. We've got a little over a degree to the right, uh, and a little bit under a degree down, and um, we'll see how that does. Well, we flew the Great Plains Trainer 40 today again, and uh, she did just fine. Uh, so very happy with the um, setup of the prop. A very slight tendency to pull to the left, but I've got uh, much worse from planes that, that got more of an engine offset. Uh, you know, especially my little Mustang and, and the Corsair, they pull extremely to the left. Um, this one only just very mild, easy to control, uh, flies along beautifully, flap-arounds, fine. Um, just keeping in mind that with limited travel on the, um, on the ailerons, you can't get an awful lot of flaps in there, but it does help slow it down and um, no adverse uh, effects at all, still good control and all of that. So all in all, very happy with the uh, latest upgrades to them all. Um, and I trust that it's helpful to you to be able to see what we went through. Well, if you haven't done so already, be sure and subscribe to our channel. Just click on that little circle there. It doesn't cost you anything. It'll keep all of this stuff handy for you. And then while you're at it, have a look at some of the other uh, videos on our channel. And I trust that you'll find them helpful. Well, I'm RC Jim signing off. You have a great day and happy flying.